Incarnation, value of the body, its guiding by the Spirit. Thus saith the Lord. Incarnation on Earth. When one of your loved ones departs for the spiritual valley, you weep instead of being filled with peace, realizing that he is getting one step closer toward his Lord. On the other hand, you celebrate when a new baby comes to your home, without realizing at that moment that the Spirit has come to fulfill a restitution in this valley of tears. It is then when you should weep for that Spirit. You bear children of your flesh, but I am he who distributes the spirits in families, in peoples, in nations, in worlds, and in such justice impenetrable for men, my love is manifested. You live in the present and do not know what I have destined for your future. I am preparing a great legion of spiritual beings which shall have to come to inhabit the earth on a delicate mission. And it is necessary that you know that many of you will be parents of these children, in whom my envoys are made flesh. Your duty is to prepare yourselves to receive and guide them. I would like to speak to you much of spiritual teachings, but you would not yet understand them. If I reveal to you the dwelling places to which you had descended on the earth, you would not be able to conceive how you lived in such places. Today, you can deny knowing the spiritual valley because I have closed to your spirit being incarnated its past so that you do not presume, succumb, nor become dejected when confronted with your new existence, which should begin like a new life. Even if you should wish to, you could not remember. I concede to you only the conservation of a thought or intuition that I reveal to you, so that you persevere in the struggle and consent when faced with trials. You may doubt all that I tell you, yet that valley was truly your dwelling place when you were a spirit. You were dwellers in the mansion in which you did not know pain, in which you felt the glory of the Father in your being, for there was no stain in it. Nonetheless, you had earned no merits. It was necessary that you leave heaven and descend to the world so that your spirit by its own efforts, conquers that kingdom. Yet, little by little, you descended morally until you felt very far from the divine and the spiritual, from your origin. When the spirit arrives on earth, it comes animated with the best intentions of consecrating its existence to the Father of pleasing him in all things, and of being useful to his fellow men. But once imprisoned in the material, tempted and tried in a thousand different ways during the journey, it weakens, cedes to impulses of the flesh and its temptations, becomes selfish, finishes loving itself above all things, and only at moments listens to its conscience or its destiny and the promises are written. My word helps you to remember your spiritual pact and to overcome the temptations and obstacles. None can say that they have never strayed from the path I have traced for them, but I forgive you so that you can learn to forgive your brothers. A great spiritual lesson is necessary to make man walk the road according to the voice of his conscience for the material world that surrounds him. In spite of all being saturated with divine love 
at being wisely constructed for the good and the happiness of man. It constitutes a test for the spirit from the instant that it comes to inhabit a world it does not belong to, united to a body whose nature is different from its own. There you can find the cause for the spirit forgetting its past. From the instant it is made flesh in an unconscious, newly born creature and fuses to it, it begins a joint life together with that being. Of the spirit, there remain only two attributes present, the conscience and intuition, but the personality, the works performed, and the past are temporarily hidden. Thus has it been decided by the Father. What would become of the spirit that comes from the light of a higher dwelling to dwell among the miseries of this world, if it remembered its past? And how many vanities there would be among men if the greatness that existed in their spirits in another, former life, were revealed to them. The real value of the body and its guiding by the spirit. I do not tell you to purify only your spirits, but also to strengthen your physical body so that the new generations, which come from you, might be healthy, and their spirits will be able to fulfill their delicate missions. Be careful of the health of your body. Seek its protection and strengthening. My doctrine counsels you to have charity with your spirit and your body, for both are complementary and need each other for the delicate spiritual fulfillment that is entrusted to them. Do not give your body a greater importance than it really has, nor allow it to occupy the place that only corresponds to your spirit. Understand that the physical body is only the instrument that you need, so that the spirit manifests himself on earth. See how this doctrine is for the spirit, for while the material shell comes every day closer to the bosom of the earth, the spirit, in contrast, comes ever closer to eternity. The body is the support in which the spirit rests while it inhabits the earth. Why let it become a chain that limits or imprisons you? Why allow it to be the guiding force of your life? Is it right for the blind to guide one who has sight in his eyes? This teaching is simple, as is all that is pure, divine, and for that reason, easy to comprehend. Yet to put it into practice at times will seem difficult to you. The works of the Spirit require efforts, renunciation, and sacrifice on the part of your body. And when you lack education or spiritual discipline, you must suffer. From the beginning of time, a struggle has existed between the spiritual and the material in trying to comprehend what is just and what is right and good in order to create a life in conformity with the law presented by God. In the midst of that battle, it seems as though a strange and malevolent force is inducing you at each step to distance yourselves from the struggle, inviting you to continue on the path of materialism in use of your free will. I tell you that there is no more temptation than the weakness of your body. It is sensitive to that which surrounds it and quick to give in easy to fall and surrender. Yet he who has managed to dominate his impulses, passions, and the weaknesses of the flesh has conquered the temptation that he bears within himself.
The Earth is a battlefield. There is much to learn. Were it otherwise, a few years of life on this planet would be enough, and you would not be sent to reincarnate again and again. There is no tomb darker and gloomier for the spirit than its own body, if in it there is scum and materialism. My word raises you from that tomb, and then gives you wings, so that you may take flight to the regions of peace and spiritual light.